death way function. So it's a very nice book, and I'm very happy to use it. I have the same So I'll talk about this connection between clustering or track wave function and some specific CFT score. There's been a long and rich history of using the formal field theory to, to engineer trial wave functions for the practical control model. And one of the interesting features that usually the state scenario is non-trivial topological um, properties of the CFT. So one good example would be the movie or the green red light states when it's connected to the what's called the paraffin 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 CFT so APF and um, and so in this, in the red red light state, you have these non-abelian monodromies and all this anionic structure, like for example in the K equals 3, we have these Fibonacci anions. And recently there's been a proposal to generalize these red red light states. So by um, Benedict and Maudin, this is jack wave function. So they have generalized clustering properties, or if you wish, generalized in principle, and there's been a conjecture which, to which CFT is this, uh, so this class for this wave function would be connected. So, and uh, there was in fact a very specific conjecture. It was that you could write these class polynomials as some certain correlators in this series. So, this is the work uh, uh, we did with Raoul here quite recently, and it's really to prove this, so that there was, there's been really strong evidence about this connection, so this is more a CFT uh, result is to really establish this, this result. So uh, it might be a bit technical in the middle, so sorry in advance, because well, if you want to, if I want to give you a flavor of how to relate these two objects, you need to enter some of the details of these particular CFTs, so I'll try to be as quick and not to enter, <laughs> well, not quick in that sense, but not to enter really the nasty details. And, well, so, well, this, so there is this long history of this connection between CFTs and the fractional function hole effect. So I will only talk about the electronic wave function, so no quasi holes here. So this is something that could be done using this technique as well to study what happens when you start adding some quasi holes. So I'll, but I'll just talk about this electronic wave function. So they are just polynomials. So I'll put that to some good age factor. And many model wave functions can be constructed using CFT, so for instance, the red resize states, which are connected to this uh, paraphernalic CFT. So information about that later, but it's, it's been known for a long time that these with result states are built with, you know, this paraphernalic field. So, and these uh, polynomials, which are described as result ground states, they have the nice clustering properties, namely that if you put k plus one particles at the same point, the wave function vanish. And in fact, it, it vanish with a power two, so I'll only talk about bosonic wave function symmetric polynomial, so if you want, you can add some just two factor if you want to fit with the dynamic one. So, um, you can also s uh, state this as a generalized poly principle, meaning that in two, yeah, that, that's also, so in two consecutive orbitals, you can put at least, at most, k particles. So, it has been a, a way to generalize this is to, once you realize that this polynomial or track polynomial, you can try to look at more general track polynomial. And so there's been a, a proposal by Benedict and Aldane about to look at more general tracks which have gener generalized clustering properties. Namely, they still vanish as you put k plus one particles together, but they start with a generic power. And so now the question is, for this read with I state, the connection with the CFT is known. What happens for these generalized tracks? Can it be written as a CFT? So well, the result was known before. There was so much evidence that we knew that it was new, known in the community which CFT was involved in there and what correlator. So, but here is just a, a formal proof of that. Well, from the CFT 
side. So how to really relate these two objects? So I'll just remind some basic properties of this specific just wave function. So they are the specific value of this alpha, which I'll tell you what it is in a minute. Then um, a brief review of why power framing series should enter this game. So if you have a polynomial which has a, which is an eigen function of this with the appropriate eigenvalues, you will know immediately that it's a jack. With you will know the lambda and you will know the alpha. So in fact that's how the connection is established. We will look at some specific correlators in the CFT and show that well it obeys this. was studied by uh, Dunlevik and Aldane, I think, to, because uh, 
a, a growth set wave function it has to be uh, added for a zero state or a pseudo singlet, so it has to be in particular um, translation invariant. And in fact, you cannot take any lambda and alpha for your jack, it will not be translation invariant. And it turns out there is a nice family of these jacks which are translation invariant, so add for a zero state if you prefer, and they are your partition needs to be so called KR admissible, it has to obey this additional constraint. So for instance you can check that this partition is two two admissible because lambda one is bigger than lambda three plus two. Lambda two is also bigger than lambda four plus two, so that's for instance two two admissible. And this is also related to this generalized uh, exclusion point principle. So you could you formulate that as stating that in R consecutive orbitals you cannot put more than k particles. So this specific polynomial standard has been studied by mathematicians and they've proven that for this specific rational value of alpha, k plus one or r minus one, and for any partition that obeys this, then well, first of all, um, then the tracks are well defined, which well, it's a, a result in itself because if you remember, they depend rationally on alpha in front of the monomial. So for some value of alpha, yeah, you can have singularities, and then your tracks just go to the So th these tracks are well defined, and they have very nice generalized clustering properties, which I call this the KR clustering property, which means that when you put K plus one particle at the same point, they vanish as alphas. So that's exactly the kind of generalized clustering properties you would expect for a kind of wave function. And also, they, they are translation invariant, so they are good. They are good pair wave function for that. Okay, so the jacks, in fact, the kind of partition that you this is a, the densest k r miscible partition, so it looks like a staircase like this. This is r and this is k, and you can rewrite it as. Uh, uh, are you expect the uh, this generalized? CFT they're related to um, except for I equals two, which is a known case with triple size and they're not unique. Okay, thank you. <laughs> think it's, uh, it's really sick for a pair of wave functions. Um, so okay, so these tracks have been considered as trail many body wave functions. So they are at the filling fraction k over r, k over r. I equals two is just standard three beta state. And so what we're going to talk about is this connection with W conform of field theory. So um, why should there be any conform of field theory behind this? There is some sort of a general connection between our frame unit conform of field theories and clustering wave function. And first of all, uh, if you look at a wave function, it has to be a SU2 singlet, so it has to be translation invariant and homogeneous with the appropriate degree and so on. And in fact, if you take any CFT and you look at this kind of object, so a correlator, and then you just add a charge part to cancel all the singular terms, by so global conformal invariance automatically gives you all this. So it's, if you wish, it's a tool to, to generate, to engineer polynomials which have the good property. The one condition is that your you, the field you use here is single channel in this Cauchy set. So, so that is so that it's just a polynomial and that you don't have these well, non abelian monotomies and different formal constants. So well that's the first superficial reason why CFT can be used to generate objects that obey all these well that are L for zero states. That's not related. So here's the gamma, it's just if you wish, when I tune my fields by with itself, I produce some other field 
psi, and this is just two delta phi minus delta psi, just to cancel the singular terms. So that is just a, a simple polynomial and not complicated one. Uh, so then if you, there are specific uh, conformal field theory called power frame unit conformal field theory, and what they have is that they have a, a set of currents, psi, and which have a group, <coughs> they are single channel, and when you fuse them, they have some kind of additive ZK charge, Psi n times psi n is psi n plus n. And all these charges are defined uh, in both cases. Uh, so, so you have exactly this kind of fusion rules in the standard power fragments used for the read reply states. But in fact, you can look at more general CFTs, but you will find some, some constraints immediately. One of them is that the dimension of the field psi n has to, be, has to have this form, plus eventually some integers. And so you find again these two parameters, R and K. And it will be the same R and K you have in the KR clustering generalized properties. So this CFT that this CFT has been studied already <coughs> for small value of R. So R equals two is the the standard power fermion that Fariev and Zamorochikov well they came up with this theory. And these are used to be as a read size state. So these CFTs are unitary, no problem. Then it starts increasing. Increasing R uh, for R equals 3, right? You can define this CFT only for even K. So it's been, it's been done by Jacob and Mathieu more recently. <coughs> and for instance, the Gatling state would be about this for K equals 2. And then as you increase R again, you start to have much more freedom. And in fact, here's a so this is, you have one single CFT every time, if you have an infinite sequence of CFT. So you have much more freedom here already. And for instance, one of these CFT here will correspond to the, the jacks. But it's just one of these CFT here. No functionality. So I guess how would you call the last is no. So, so that's about power frames and it can form our field series. But in fact, the conjecture that relates W series to the W theory is well, generically not a power frame unit field theory, so why does this why do these W series enter this game? Well it turns out that for spe very specific W series are also power frame unit theories, so that where the connection lies. For instance, where n R equals four, you have one of these one of these infinite series. So, I said that already, that if you take this power frame, power frame unit correlators, so that's the gamma we had before, here it falls down, so R and K. So that's automatically a pseudo singlet, and it has this generalized clustering property. So now, what are these W theories are interesting, interesting about them? So, well, they are extended conformal they have an extended conformal symmetry, meaning in, in addition to the stress energy tensor, you usually have additional current. So uh, K equals two, is, which is the first case, that's a standard uh, Durasso symmetry, so it's the not extended case. And the first case after that is K equals three, and it's been developed by Fadiev and Zamolachikov first. That's the so-called W3 theory. When you have two currents, you have the stress energy tensor, and you have an additional spin switch on it. And then it's been generalized to NK by Fadi and Nikenov in 1998. And so these are also the prototype of CFT with additional symmetries because you have many currents in them. And they have bigger and bigger spin. So you always have you always have the S equal to spin of the stress energy tensor, and then you have a spin switch spin switch currents, the four current.
Um, so far, the approach is it, it so especially at this time, the approach was to try to fit additional currents, but not too many, and try to cross the algebra and then see what you can do. So that's, that's <coughs> how they build the double industry theory. But then if you want to generalize it already, you cannot do it by hand. You need some additional handbag for that. So actually, all these CFTs are based on the SUK Kazumut. So, so, so we will refine later this SUK structure. So, and for K equal 2, you recover this standard SU2 structure you have. So that's how they came up. They are, here is a com constant quantization. Of you can have integral um, classical systems and you can build CFTs out of this kind. So this, this is a big paper by uh, Atiyah and Kenoff who are trying to do this. And also this is the case on the SUK, the algebra you can do this for. So, so all these CFTs look very complicated, but in, in fact when you look at the rational CFTs, they have many similarities with the standard Gerasso case. So for instance, we have a series of rational, discrete series of rational CFT. So I call this W and even from T to prime, those are the standard notation. They have a rational temporal charge, okay, so that value does not really matter. Um, and okay, so PFT prime is a cos prime, that's it. And they are on unitary only when T prime is T cos prime. And in fact, the case we will look at, we won't have T prime prime equals t plus r minus one. So if r is two, it's fine, it's unitary. And if r is bigger than two, then it's not. But it still is a rational case. Um, so let's go to the simplest case first. So the, the, the <coughs> connection be with the checks in that case was known already. So sequence of uh, rational values of C where you have a minimal series of rational one that's so minimal means you have a finite number of primary fields. And so they are la labeled by these two integers N and N prime which are bound in this so called path table. So we will see that N is an integer so it's Just give you the dimension of the field that now we don't need that, just to see that it's a rational dimension. So that's a you have the field n prime, and this is a conform frame which is much known about the CFT. And for instance, we know the fusion rules with uh, so that's in some sense the simplest field in the theory, one two. And if you fuse it with n and prime, well you get this two channel. So it's not single channel, it's it's no it's no power frame. For instance, if, just, if I fuse one, two with one, two, well, I get these two fields. Still, so it's not single channel. But what happens if, if I take t equals three? This field is out of the cat's table. So that means the channel disappears, and I'm left with one single channel. So if I call that field psi, but we have psi times psi with identity, that's the power frame of fusion rule. So that's where the power frame are hidden. If when I put this, what you I put it to three, then <coughs> and this is 
just a parameterization of p prime because r can be any value. So I, I, I've just chosen p here. So what do I have here? I have a field that obeys. So I said fermionic, but well, in fact, it doesn't have to empty commute. It depends on r because you see the dimension of this field is r over four. So in the reprecise states, well, the movement states here, you find one half. So this, because this field is in the theory, that's a particular realization of this general <coughs> of bubble field theory. So that means that if I take this field psi, I build the endpoint correlator, and then I add the U1 charge, this is a polynomial that's as SU do singlets, because it comes from the CFP and the single channel. And it will also have this k equals two R generic uh, clustering property. In fact, the statement is that this correlator and the U1 charge is exactly the jack. So that's been proven by Cardi in 2004, I think. And okay, I'll give you some details of how we make this connection. So the game is to take this endpoint correlator and to show that it obeys the same uh, differential equation of the jack. So how do you usually get differential equations in a CFT? Well, you take your primary field, it will have some degeneracies. It mean, means that some, so this L and here are the Virat's robots. So usually you have, after level two, you have two descendants. You have L minus two acting on the field and L minus one squared acting on the field. And usually they are independent for generic values of the central charge and to control the dimension. But it so happens that here for that specific well, these two states are linearly dependent, and that's how you get the differential equation. Because if you if you put that in a, any correlation function, so the phi one, phi two, or any field, you impose that this field is zero. So that means that so acting with l minus l minus one squared is just a derivative squared, and this is the l minus two. So it's just stating that these two fields are linearly. Dependent. In fact, why is this uh, the key point to obtain a differential equation is that you can transform any Virat's row mode into a differential operator. And that's true because, well, the Virat's row mode encodes, so the stress energy tensor encodes how your theory reacts to a change of coordinates. So it, it has a geometrical interpretation. So it's not surprising that you can always express this as a differential operator acting on the correlation. So for instance, in that case, you can show that L minus two acting on field, and then on all the fields, it's the same thing as these differential operators acting on the correlation. So this is just the differential equation. So you take your, your field psi, your correlators, endpoints, you play around with this, and you will find that it obeys a Calogero of the and Hamilton. And so, so you take your endpoint correlators, you write this that uh, taking twice the derivative is the same thing as acting with L minus two. Then you, you replace this L minus two by your differential operators and well, you're left with a nasty looking differential equation. It must already start to look like a Calogero Sutter and Hamiltonian. And in fact, what's missing is just the U1 part, so the charge part. So, so if you add this, the charge part, then you will find that uh, this becomes exactly the, uh, the Calogero set of an Hamiltonian with, with this value of alpha, which is the k plus one divided by r minus one for k plus two, and the appropriate partition. So basically, you've proven that these correlators multiplied by the good u of r is the jack. So this result has been known for like five years already in the case of minimal models, and why wasn't it known for the other case? Well, the main reason is that on the other case, you have this, uh, this additional current. So you will still find that you have uh, linearly dependent descendants, but this time they will not in only involve the Russell modes, but as well some extended current modes. And these extended currents do not have geometrical interpretation. So that means you cannot express them usually as differential operators. So 
there's no standard way to get a differential equation out of this. And so, well, this approach seems to fail. So it turns out that you can find some additional ingredients that makes it work. So I think it's a recent paper by Adrian and Pete Panoff where they studied this W series and fact you have. We still have the RAS loop and then other batch of commutation relations. That's still tractable by hand. So we can do that. Okay, we still have primary fields. But this time they have two quantum numbers, they have the conformal dimension and they also have this W that's a zero mode of the W field. Uh, you can still find find power fermions in this series for a specific value of B. That's exactly works exactly in the, in the previous case. You will also find that these fields have the degeneracy condition that usually gives rise to differential equation, but this implies some additional uh, Oh, I didn't say. So lambda is Yeah, with more and more uh, right, right, right. Yeah, bigger degrees polynomials in N and M. And <coughs> here you just have this T, T, and you add some T, 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 and some W, W, and you write and Just for the next case, it will take two slides, I guess. And it is completely untractable to the chain. So then you have to start relying on the integral wall. But it's all done. a sequence of uh, rational series and this time our primary fields they have a bit more indices it's because before we thought we had two indices it's because it was a SU2 well we had two copies of one index one index now we have two copies of two indices it's because it's a uh, SU3 structure appearing but except for this small complication we still have a higher cast label which probably is like this and all these n's are integers bigger than one Good. And this is the simplest fusion you can have. It's a field. Okay, we don't need to look at the the end part doesn't doesn't move it, doesn't concern. So that's just the integral part. So two one with n one prime and two prime give me three channels. In fact it reproduces the SU3 uh, fundamental fusion. But okay, so we reproduce the SU3 structure everywhere. So now the thing is we want to build a single channel fields in, in this because we want to find power fermions. So in fact we would think that this could be one of the power fermion psi and maybe one 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 two could be the psi dimension. 
So we write the substitution. So that would be psi times psi. I have speak channels on each time. Uh, I have some simplification already because you see this field, you have a zero here. That's out of the gas table, always. Here as well, here as well. So that is not three channel, all these fusions are two channels. And now to get rid of one more, well, I use the same trick as before. I take P to be small enough so that this field, this field, and this field are out, out of the gas table again. And I'm left with this. So th this second truncation happens when for specific values of the P here. And now my fusion will sound well. Psi times psi gives psi dagger, etc. That's just a Z3 fusion. So I found my performance in my double inclined P theory. So yeah, you have my performance. Now I will try to look at the endpoint correlator that I call later. And <coughs> the question will be how can I find a differential equation for it? So I will first I will try to do the same as, as I did for the case of 2K, Calpi field. I look at the degeneracy condition of that field. So how can I just be speaking here that we have a D3 theory. So it's not the general case of this far family field theory, that's a specific case. So what we say is how we generate on that level. And so okay now I will take my field of psi. So which is this synthesis and try to look what are the degeneracies in this descendants. So well in fact I find that at level one I have one degeneracy and at level two some other degeneracy. So the coefficient do not matter but is that the W minus 1 I, I think of, of psi is linearly dependent with uh, the Biasso mode actually. And these three modes also they have uh, this uh, linear dependence. But the trouble is that these two W modes they do not have a geometry mode interpretation, meaning if I plug this into a correlation function, well, I cannot get rid of those. They will remain there. So actually there is a trick to get rid of these and it's to use the asymptotic behavior of the current and that gives you just one more additional relation which is enough to, to kill all of these and that only works for a symmetric function which is exa exactly what we have here we will consider psi 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 all in the same field and then it works fine expand this W mode in uh, this W field in mode, just like this. And you know that uh, as z go with, to infinity, it has to decrease at one over z times uh, to the twice the conformal dimension, that's two times three is six. So you know that it decreases <coughs> like this. And you also know that from the OP with uh, primary field, if I take a bunch of n primary field and I insert W field, this will, this correlation function can be expanded like this. So this is a W zero mode, and then a W minus one, W minus one. So the J index means it acts on the field number J. So, and then I can say that this correlation function, I have some particular dependence on Z, and it has to decrease like this. So it gives you a bunch of relations. For instance, you see there is one term, it looks like it decreases at, at one over Z. But it has to vanish because it has to decrease faster than that. So that gives you a first relation, which is sum over j of just this is zero. And then you also can also add that the one step that, that you know that this term vanishes, the next term is one over z squared vanishes as well, etc. And one of these relations is this. And that's a good relation that will give you the L0 Hamiltonian. So well, it's just some like it is some details, but in fact, without this step, you're stuck. So that's the step missing to go from k equal to k equal to the point. Actually, because you're expanding the equation in the middle in z. This one, yeah. yeah. So you have a 1 over z dominant term. Of z. Yeah, and you, you know that it vanishes, so it gives you a first relation. Then you have a 1 over z squared term, and you know it vanishes as well. In fact, <coughs> you have 
time relation kind of this, meaning the one over z term is zero, one over z squared term. And that, that's the one over z three term. So why this one? Well, because we will replace this by, uh, when you replace this with the your vector condition, you will have a derivative squared here. And so that's, that we will take a kind of general and term. So that's why we need this relation. But in fact, we could take any of the other relation would have a different uh, differential equation. But if you want to make the connection with the jack, that's the one you need to take. So now what do we have? We have these two uh, linear dependence between descendants, and we also have this relation. So now you just plug, you replace this W2 W minus two acting on the field by like this. So now you just have Dirac for modes here. You do the same here. <coughs> and now you have a relation with only Dirac for modes. And these, those have, you can express them as derivatives. So then you will find a differential equation. And then it's just a matter of playing with it and you will find well, what you expect, which is this algebra. <coughs> It looks it's very similar, it's just, it's just the same form as we had for the k equals 2 case with just different coefficients. And if you add the, the u1 part, well, you will find the algebra that are Hamiltonian for the good alpha, which is 3 plus 1, and the r minus 1, and the good partition. And so what you've proven is this. These correlators, which excite this specific field in this specific W field theory, and the u1 part, this is R equals two, it's so we just like take so we need to do some yeah. relevant states for So then you have all this generalization for bigger R, but uh, keep in mind that there are a whole lot of symmetry, so we don't need to do with those, but uh, uh, so okay, so that's how to prove that for K equals three. Uh, it turns out what uh, for generic K it's The one thing that you cannot do is, well, this relation you always have it, so no problem. The thing is how, how you need how you get this in the generic case. Because in that case you can have this by just taking your your permutation relation. So you take those, you act of your node on your null state and it checks that you get zero for all the positive nodes. That's doable by hand. For the next case, it's uh, well, might be doable by hand if you're uh, weak. For k equals four, and it rapidly becomes untractable. So you need some uh, additional tools, but they are all readily available. One of them, there is some, there is an object that counts the number of descendants you have for a given field. So well, so why it's more complicated for the general k? Because well, first you have many many currents with higher and higher speeds, so the commutation relation is huge. And also, since there are many currents, that means you have many descendants. I take any primary field, so I have only the primary field of level zero. At level one, I can act with all these modes, so I have k minus one descendants. At level two, I have order k square over two descendants already. So that's a lot. So if you want to look at what are the generic uh, linear dependence you have between all these different uh, descendants it's, it's really difficult but it's just too many fields but in fact there is a nice tool that counts how many independent fields you have as for the character and it's already available so you go into a DF and uh, look at an article you find a nice page with the character so and in fact you will, you will, you will be able to prove that so this will be the paraphernalic field in this series. It's, it works the same as the, the case I showed you in this. You, you, in fact, you put this small value of t here, and you have the quantification of the single channel, and it works just fine. The thing you need, the only thing you need, is to find descendants of this form. It's the same form we had before. So it's a W3 is a pitch recurrence. So you need this kind of linear dependence at level one, and this kind of level two. And in fact, using the characters, you can show that this field, which has these indices, so 
how we have time and find the disease for time and time. Then, well, first of all, if there's only one state, I covered one, not k minus one state, they're all given uh, in our descendants, so they just have uh, the Russell descendants. And at level two, you only have two states, which you can take as being these two, the Russell model and the psi. So that, in fact, ensures that this field is linearly dependent with this one, because there is only one and dependent field at level one. And at level two, well, this field can be expressed as combination of these two as well. So and now you just have to fix this value of this and you in fact it's easy to express in it. You don't have to act with all the modes of all the computation relation that you only want to know for this part. But using the character it's much simpler and once you fix this beta new nu, it just it works the same. You find the differential equation and you add the one part and you find exactly the character of Newtonian with the appropriate value of alpha appropriate partition, so well, you get the result. So that's a generic differential equation you find. So it's always the same form. That's for any k and any r, just that this coefficient here depends on k and r. And if you add the u1 down, it, the u1 term just becomes the <coughs> character of the term. With good alpha and the good partition. So it's proven that uh, your correlator plus this u1 part is So, uh, well, that's all about this. So that was, uh, uh, it's it's only a CFT result, I guess. It answers more to call the CFT that And that's very interesting for CFT for several reasons. First of all, usually in CFT, you never look at endpoint function because it's, well, first of all, it's complicated. There are endpoints. And then you don't need them. When you build a CFT, you only need four point function. If you check that all your four point functions are well defined, then it's safe. So well, that's the first challenge is that usually we don't look at this object. So it's very nice here to have some results of, at least for this field, we know the endpoint function. The other interesting thing is that usually in this W series, we also don't know the correlation function because usually there is no differential equation. That's how we compute them usually. And here it so happens that everything works fine. And well, it, the motivation initially was that, well, it's it's known that these are jacks, so it's was known that they should obey some differential equation, but that there has to be a way to find it using purely CFT. <coughs> but okay, so far it's just proving some result that was already known. But confusion, uh, <coughs> we proved that it's a jack. Good. Now, what else can be done? Well, we just looked so far at electronic wave functions on the sides, but the CFT tells you how to build how to itself quasi holes. And in that case, that is not known. You, you know it's this is just a jack, so there is no quasi hole, but as you start uh, inserting quasi holes, you will have, well, it's not polynomial anymore, you have monotromies and you have different polynomial blocks. Uh, for the read reside state, I think the explicit uh, form of this is known, uh, that's uh, AD and Jared and KK, for, for quasi holes, but then if you put more quasi holes, it's not known. So the analytic form of this is not known. And what's good about this is we, we managed to find a differential equation for the psi because the psi was a very simple field. It turns out the sigma is also a very simple field and you can also get a differential equation for this big, bigger, more complicated object. So I guess that could be used to study or maybe to even find the analytic expression for this, um, this function. Even for the read reside state where they are not known So that would be one interesting uh, direction to, to push this now. It's now that we, we have this nice differential equation could be used to study a quasi-on excitation. And okay, so even if you're not happy with this R because of this, because you can't use theory, this also concerns the R equals two step. Um, then one other technique that could be used to study the same objects would be the there is a Coulomb gas technique which is readily available for all these W series and it allows you to represent any correlator as a, an integral. So we just use <coughs> a few So, uh, okay, first of all, if, since we know how to build jacks with this, you could have an integral representation of these jacks. I don't know if it's very useful, I'm sure that's kind of mathematician. But 
maybe what concerns us more is uh, these objects which are still not known in general case. And these objects have different conformal blocks, and usually what the Coulomb gas gives you for every conformal block, you have a specific integral representation, and it gives you everything the grating, the monotromies, uh, and also an explicit form, analytic form for this function. So that could be an interesting thing. There is some information we already have about, so we know, like the Fibonacci index, you know how the tensor field of space grows, you know. Well, basically, you know the number of channels, the, you know the number of conformal blocks here, and that's the only thing you know you can compute in the analytic expression. So, every information you can extract out of the number of fusions. Tell you something about the phase or not, it's a different matter. But, like, you know, to get the pair correlation function, for example, for a, for a lock in phase, you can get these using it. Whereas in this case, if you have a function, you can get it.
some kind of mapping between the spectrum of the CFD and the different state hands which are going on. And I don't know if it's if there's any connection except that it's the objects look the same as the but it's very different. Well, the fact for the only one. Because we related this, this central charge to this quasi whole scheme then it's just a part for the only one. And that's gotta be negative. But that's quite that theorem, it's not part for the only one. I mean for charge, you take the charge and you extract the central charge. Yeah, but then you take then you then you, you just take the quasi whole energy. some work to try to have R equals eight and A equals three, but what is the simple solution? But even there, it's just, just a QR algebra, it's just a bar family algebra, it didn't work out. Not the representation, so we do not know if it's unitary, not unitary, if there is <coughs> some sort of unitary or rational CFD state in that. So that seems it relates to your first question. It's what can you how can you